And in business, the North accounted for 87% of all the poor people in Nigeria in 2016, the World Bank has disclosed in a new report. The report, titled Advancing Social Protection in a Dynamic Nigeria, released on January 28, 2020, was described as a detailed analysis of the social protection sector in the country. The report noted that social protection measures implemented by the government in Nigeria had not been able to address the high level of poverty as well as the negative impact of conflict and natural disasters. The World Bank observed that although Nigeria is richly endowed, it had a larger proportion of the world's extreme poor than any other country. With me in the studio to take a look at this is an economist. Uh, we have Gospel Obele, thank you very much for thank coming in. And of course, we have Mba Uzuku, Managing Director, Grand Central. Pleasure to have you, company. Thank you very much. All right, quickly, gentlemen, the report, your reactions uh, to it. Are they factual enough for you? Well, um, I think sometime last year, there was a little bit of an argument around whether or not um, this data that we see is actually correct, correct. or not. Yeah. I tend to go much more with anecdotal data than, uh, than I do with, with uh, statistics. But I wouldn't argue with that. I think, I think it seems very much that that is what we're seeing, is extreme poverty. From your um, standpoint as an economist, what is the implication of this report? Well, having engaged on different levels, you know, and um, worked also in the north, um, it's largely correct to, to a large extent. And um, I think the challenges are a blend of different cluster of issues, you know, that have coordinated in one way or another to make the situation what it is today. Um, what would happen at the end of the day in terms of implications would be that um, if we don't take the necessary steps, looking at it from political, from the political economy, infrastructure, fixing economic issues, even social cultural issues and the likes, and redistributing income and the likes, or reworking social protection to ensure that it's taking root on the fundamental issues, we would find out that that issue, was, it, the poverty challenge will scale, and then the effect or the impact would be widespread, not just in the northern region, but downward south. Okay, so I spoke with a guest earlier on the same subject, and he was a bit skeptical about the fact that um, poverty in the north um, is as a result of uh, education or a lack of it. Um, he believed that it, the south had more of the oil uh, you know, and that is the reason why we have, because the report highlighted that uh, poverty is higher in the north than in the south. What are the steps that need to be taken to, you know, sort of breach this gap between the north and the south? Do you agree in the first instance that it's because of the oil? It depends on, on the data that you're looking at. Um, if, you, if, you want, if you decompose the, the data around on the basis of things like um, um, internally generated revenue, um, FAC allocations, et cetera, et cetera, I would agree, yes, certainly. I mean, that, that's, that, 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 that's pretty obvious um, in the sense that, that the, I mean, Lagos, for instance, is, is in the data published for 2019 or 2018 is, um, has, has um, internally generated revenue that is more than a, 30 other states put together. The reason for that is obvious. States like the oil producing states will clearly have higher IGR and perhaps a higher allocation um, on the basis on which we distribute the FAC. But you set that aside and then you start asking, okay, so what do we do with the money that we have? And how does that money then build inclusive growth and inclusive development inside each society? So when you break that down to sub-nationalities or if you like the states, then you start to ask yourself, well, okay, this state um, <clears throat> had, had X amount of money. How was that money eventually distributed and what did they do to generate income, generate wealth within that small community? So at a macro level, yes, it would look so that there is a skew that is based largely on oil revenues. But when you go into each state, then you now have to try to understand well, what's going on inside there. So we look at Lagos for all its wealth and, uh, all its, and the size of its local economy there is still a high incidence of poverty in Lagos. When we talk about out-of-school children, for instance, many of them, Lagos, I think, has the highest, highest number of out-of-school children in the South. Really? Yes, I think Lagos, I think it's either Lagos and Oyo that have, uh, that are, are the, highest, have the highest levels of out-of-school children in the South. And there are out-of-school children across Nigeria. It's not just a Northern North, issue. Yes, so indeed. coming back to the issue around the North, I believe that the, that the question, the real question is around what 
um, has been done with the funds that okay. are received by each of those state governments and have they been able to translate that into um, growing an economy that generates jobs and, in, and by generating jobs in itself, it drives the education side because education, you cannot divorce education from economic productivity. All right, so quickly, if you can do this in 30 seconds, I'll be very grateful. Um, your thoughts as to the approaches that we are yet to adopt in trying to address the issue of poverty. I think so far, approaches have been more patchy than dealing with the core issues. Um, we, we need to deal with the, with the fundamental cultural challenges around poverty. Um, the South is more commercialized in term, and those are individual efforts, not necessarily because the state has, in quote, empowered it. So we need to deal with the core issues around that speaks to poverty, and that's on the lines of the political economy, the infrastructure, and you know, empowering the people in the environment and ensuring that there's an enabling environment to do business, and ensuring that businesses in that space can plug into the mainstream and, and the likes. And, uh, but for me, I, I think at the end of the day, social protection should be used to deal with the main issues on one side and then manage the cost and effect challenge, not necessarily the patch. I seem to agree. Yeah. Thank you very much. I wish I, well, I, I, I almost agree. I'm not sure that I do completely, but. Um. I, I wish we, can, we will definitely continue this conversation. Thank you so much, gentlemen, you, for Jim. your thoughts. Thank you for your time. Yeah.